Hello and welcome to this, another fantastic episode of Ring Classic. I'm Charles Hawkeye, and today the first opening match of the fourth episode will be Nancy Hammer versus the War Girl Frogger. Entering the ring first of all, we start off with Nancy Hammer. Nancy Hammer making her impressive debut last week. And this intimidating woman all in red is making her way slowly down to the ring, but I can only assume that this next match will certainly be a clash of similar styles, as both the war girl Fragger and Nancy Hammer are known for hard hits and fast offense. Nancy out here fighting on her own, and of course the war girl Fragger fighting in part with the war party. I can't wait to see how this pair of talented women will try and show up the rest of the night with this opening match. from our wonderful announcer, this is War Girl Fraga. And if you haven't seen either of these two women fight before, you are certainly in for a treat. Flanked by her stablemate, the Warboy Haas, we'll have to see how much of an effect he can have on the match that's about to happen. Now, since not being able to capture the Tag Team Championships, the War Party have been on a bit of a downward spiral. We'll have to see if the Fraga is able to turn that around tonight. Now in this opening moments of the match, this is some of the most important parts of the contest. The pair starting off slow as Fraga pushes the taller Nancy Hammer into the corner. Looks like the rest is going in for the breakup. And the pair ending in a surprisingly, uh, nope, Wargo Fragger charging in right away, not allowing Nancy any time to even get out of the corner as she proceeds to choke her with her knee. The Wargo seemingly living up to her name until Nancy manages to turn it around with an arm drag and a swift slap to the face. And now a slow elbow knocking Fragger straight to the floor, Nancy continues to put pressure. An Irish whip into the corner and Nancy follows it up with a pair of knees right to Fragger's back. The pair really whipping each other around the ring. We'll have to see who can press the advantage now. And Nancy again with the elbow. Really working Fragger's neck and arm shoulder. But Fragger is quickly back on the offense with a meteor and knees to Nancy's face. It doesn't appear to keep Nancy down for long as she kicks Fraga right back to the floor and keeps back on to her advantage. Perhaps looking to end this match early. Now in this opening match of Ring Classic, these two have really been going at it as Fraga gets to the floor and kicks up right away, grabbing Nancy as she came out to try and keep on the attack. 
but the war girl fragger managed to stop that. Quick fake out punch knocks Nancy right back to the floor onto the padded concrete of the Ring Classic Arena. It seems the war girl fragger here has really found her element as Nancy continues to take a beating on the outside. Taking the action back to the ring now as Fraga follows Nancy back in and looks to use the advantage she created when she was on the outside with a back suplex, followed up with a big knee right to Nancy's chin. Slowing things down a bit with an arm lock. Fraga really has been in control ever since Nancy took that beating outside on the concrete padded floor. Nancy breaking free of that arm lock. With a vicious set of punches and an arm drag. Able to free herself from what looked to be a painful submission hold. Instantly going back to a flurry of kicks to the Fraga on the ground. Taking it back outside again and this time near Fraga's stable mate. Perhaps a very poor choice from Nancy. But that slap does peg to differ. Fraga able to fight back with a quick knee and Nancy quickly countering whatever slam Fraga had in mind, following up with a hurricane runner. Though it seems this time Nancy was on top of that outside brawl. Looks to see perhaps if she can end it with that knee trembler knocking Fraga to the floor, but Haas has the ref distracted, looking to pull the turnbuckle away and expose the metal, but it didn't even seem to phase Nancy as she keeps on the attack, moving on to an arm spin. Slamming the wrist into the ground, it looks like Nancy could be setting up for something bigger here as she goes to the corner. She could be calling for her big knee, this ended match last time. Fraga looks to be, once again, another victim of that powerful knee. Knocking out Cole, this could be a three, it is a three count. As the ghost, Nancy Hammer, picks up another impressive victory. Here to see the wonderful highlights of that incredible contest. The knee here, and Haas looking to help out his stablemate, though it didn't appear to make much of a difference, as he didn't do it later, just here when a second knee really put Fragger down for that three count. Always good to see the three count in slow motion. Here is your winner, the ghost, Nancy Hammer. Nancy Hammer here really proving herself with her second victory in Ring Classic. Who knows where this talented young woman could go next. But now on to part of the quarterfinals of the Scepter Quest. The Neverman, Aiden Bourne, Jonathan Anytime, and the incredibly talented, world-famous Brian Danielson. Of course, here we have the excitable Jonathan Anytime, one half of the Team D Generation Z. We'll have to see how far this man's talent and enthusiasm can take him along the Scepter Quest. I do think of the um, the other of all three people in this match. He may be a bit of an underdog, and definitely the one lacking in a killer instinct when compared to the likes of. Aiden Bourne and Daniel Bryan. Weighing in at 
course, here we have your beer bash champion, Aidan Braun. Just an incredibly talented island's own. A real rough customer if you've ever met anyone here. Could be one of the favourites to win this entire quest. And then perhaps he may have to change his nickname. A man who rarely needs any kind of introduction. Brian Danielson is here and could go all the way in this scepter quest. Of course, the villain of the victors of this match will go on to face Sam, and whoever wins of one of our matches later tonight between Regicide, Alex Kane, and the Warboy Haas. We'll have to see which one of these three men can really grab the advantage in the early moments of the match. Jonathan Anytime going straight for Brian Danielson. And for Aidan Bourne. Able to at least knock them both down quickly. And it looks like Jonathan Anytime is really looking to prove me, the commentator, wrong. Showcasing a killer instinct I haven't seen from him before. It seems like he really wants to prove himself in this Scepter Quest tournament. Missing the slap and Aiden makes him pay for it with a swift European uppercut. Already cutting down his legs and the hard-hitting men just flying past each other. Brian Danielson climbing to the top rope and Aiden chopping him down, but Brian O'Brien managing to kick him back. While Aiden's out on the top on the floor, it looks like Brian Danielson is targeting Jonathan anytime. Perhaps the, maybe he also sees a weaker link here, but Jonathan really showing the exact opposite of that. Knocking Brian to the floor and going to the top rope. And Aiden ruins it with a swift drop kick to the back. And this could be a big move here, it looks like. Yes. Just a giant back suplex from Aiden. Taking Jonathan out of the picture as Daniel tries to recover outside. Quick one count there following that back suplex from the top rope. It looks like Aiden will have to do more damage if he wants to take out Jonathan. Just some aggressive stomping to Jonathan's face and a quick flying elbow to Brian Danielson. Aiden proving why he's at least the beer bash champion, able to handle the chaos of a triple threat as Brian Danielson escapes his submission hold and knocks him down with an elbow of his own. A swift kick and looks like Jonathan wants to get involved again and Bra Brian Danielson is making him pay with a flurry of blows and a dragon suplex. Going for that pin as Aiden is stunned on the ropes and once again only a one count. Jonathan really looking coming out here to try and prove himself to the ring classic crowd. Taken out by Aiden, Jonathan gets knocked down by a swift elbow and Aiden seems to look on something here. He has the yeah, the cattle mutilation. But Jonathan's able to roll out of his way quick and counter with a swift elbow to Aiden's jaw. Daniel once again getting the dragon suplex, knocking Jonathan off. And Aiden and Brian are grappling in the other corner, other side of the ring. Aiden locking in this clutch around this corner, but Daniel Bryan manages. But Brian Danielson manages to escape. Following with a swift kick into the corner, knocking Aiden right into there. And a tornado DDT from the middle rope. At this point here, people watching, it could really be anyone's match. 
Jonathan anytime really showing me up for the um, for the doubt I had earlier. Even if he is taking quite a beating, he is not going quietly into that good night. Looks like Aiden could be setting up for here as he kicks Jonathan in the midsection and goes for that impressive move there, looking to maybe end the match and carry on in the Scepter quest. But only a two count there, compared to the one counts earlier, but certainly a move in the right direction. This action being really fast and loose here as all three men are trying to prove exactly why they have been chosen for this Scepter Quest tournament. As Jonathan counters whatever slam Daniel Bri Brian Danielson had in mind and answers back with a slam of his own. And going for that quick cover, this really could be his match here, but not even managing to get the one count from Brian Danielson. A swift kick to the back, it looks like Jonathan could be getting frustrated, setting up for something big and gets busted open for even trying. As Aiden takes him out and goes for the cover on Brian, only just catching the one count. This really could be Aiden's moment here. Perhaps the Neverman could go on to be something more. With that impressive suplex knocking Brian down, and Aiden's going to the top rope. He could be setting up for his handed elbow drop. This could be the end of the match as a bloodied Jonathan anytime struggles on the outside of the ring. And that's correct. Aiden carries on in the Scepter Quest tournament. Able to pick up that win over a man who has impressed me and a man who has always impressed the world. Jonathan anytime really will is set for maybe bigger things in Ring Classic but sadly can't go forward with the Scepter Quest tournament. We'll have to see if his partner does any better in the next match. Coming up with an impressive victory over a rookie and a worldwide superstar, Aiden Bourne is set to carry on to the next part of the Scepter Quest tournament. Definitely not living up to his nickname here. We'll have to see how far the Neverman can go in this set of quest. Next, of course, we have a little bit of another clash of styles with Regicide, the Warboy Haas, and Alex Kane. Now, of course, Regicide here is the one man not associated with any stable right now. Making his way to the ring from Munich, Germany, weighing in at 232 pounds. We'll have to see how well that does for him, and perhaps the two members of a stable that have been warring over the tag team championships might have some bad blood there, as the War Party once again meets against the Annex in this part of the Scepter Quest. So far, it hasn't really been a tournament for Annex here. We'll have to see if Alex Kane can turn that around. Of course, the leader of the Annex will be fighting later tonight for the Ring Classic Women's Championship. I'm sure Alex Kane and all his other stablemates are hoping that this match can just be the start of Annex making sure they can stay on top. With Diana Masters maybe capturing the Ring Classic Women's Championship later tonight, and Alex Kane hopefully looking to carry on in the Scepter Quest tournament.
Melbourne, Australia, weighing in at 179 pounds, War Boy Haas. Now while War Boy Haas is the smallest man in this match, don't let that make you count him out. Like all members of the War Party, War Boy Haas fights hard, fights fast, and will fight to win. So far tonight has not been the War Party's night. We'll have to see if War Boy Haas can turn that around and get a win for the War Party and carry on in the Scepter Quest tournament. Opening moments of the match and Regicide already pushing through and taking out Warboy Haas, showcasing his power compared to the smaller, paler man. Alex Kane looking on, perhaps pleased that the stable mate he, he used to go to war with is getting his head kicked in. Alex Kane answering back with a super kick and a series of blows, taking out Regicide, and then taking out Haas with an impressive locked up suplex. A swift kick to the back and Alex Kane is in control of both these men but Regicide fights back and takes him out with a picture perfect drop kick. Has interrupting whatever was about to happen there taking out Regicide with a high knee and going for that quick cover but not even able to get the one count. Alex Kane showing off in the corner as Regicide and Haas battle it out in the centre of the ring. Haas knocking Regicide out of the ring and Alex Kane takes the opportunity with another swift suplex rolling through himself and taking the time to taunt. Going for that quick cover but not able to get any more points there. Haas quickly countering with his clothesline as well able to knock Alex Kane down, picking him back up, but Regicide interrupts whatever he had planned. The pair once again brawling in the center as Alex Kane shows off in the corner, but interrupts whatever big move Regicide had planned there with a swift punch to Haas's face. Haas being a little bit of a punching bag compared with the two larger men in the ring, we'll have to see how far he was smaller of the pet three can take it in this match. I'm not even sure what happened there, but it looked like a drop kick, a clothesline just took out Alex Kane at the same time from both Haas and Regicide, as Regicide lifts up Alex Kane in an impressive deadlift of gut wrench suplex. A clothesline taking Haas out of the picture as Regicide goes for the cover, but not even getting the one count. A swift kick to the back, but it seems to not phase Alex Kane as he whips Regicide's arm and slams him into the floor. These two go and blow for blow as Haas recovers on the outside. Regicide setting up for something big and slamming Alex Kane's head into the mat. But Haas breaking up the pin before anything can happen there. This is still completely Regicide's chance to come as he sets up for the tombstone pile driver. Going for the cover and Alex Kane is completely knocked out. Regicide winning in quick succession, taking out both men in this triple threat. We now know which three men will be part of the next match with Sam, Aiden Bourne and Regicide. Of the three matches these men have had, I must say that Regicide has clearly been the most dominant when compared to nearly anyone else in this tournament. While we still have at least three uncompeted quarter-final matches, I will say that perhaps Regicides might be one of the most impressive shows of dominance. Once again, thanking our wonderful production team for showing these amazing highlights 
of this cakewalk Regicide just went through. The powerful German man carrying on the tournament, and after that match, he now might be my favorite to win this entire Here's thing. Winner. And next, of course, we have another quarterfinal match in the Scepter Quest. Another member of Annex in Jason McKay, Ray De La and a member of G Generation Z, Chad Jacobs. Now the pride of Spain here coming down to the ring, looking to make a name for himself here in Ring Classic in the UK. And I think winning the Scepter Quest could really be the thing to do it. Now of all the men in this match here, he is probably the most high-flying and explosive when compared to the powerful Jason McKay and the rather large Chad Jacobs. Of course, the pride of Spain here. An impressive man with an amazing set of skills. I just know you will definitely get excited from the moment of his first move in the ring. champions representing Annex, Jason McKay. This powerful Scottish man is here to perhaps improve Annex's winning ways, taking over this entire tournament. But we'll have to see how far the tag team champion can get. Now, while I did doubt his tag team partner earlier, Jonathan Anytime did prove me wrong with his real grit and determination. And from London, England, weighing in at 198 pounds, Jacob! We'll just have to see how far Chad can really make it in this match tonight. If he fights anything like his partner did earlier, he will at least impress the Ring Classic crowd when compared to the general attitude and look that generally comes when you are Chad Jacobs. And of course, all important opening moments of this match We'll have to see which of these men can grab the opportunity first as Ray and Chad fight out in the opening moments and manages to get a one count with Ray's impressive suplex. Raking the back there as Jason McKay goes after Ray. It looks like the two bigger men are brawling it out as Jason McKay towers over everyone else in this match. managing to knock Chad down with a series of stiff lariats 
but Rain will not be fought the same way as he whips Jason into the corner and has a drop kick to his back. Jason McKay fighting out whatever Ray had planned from the Samoan drive position and really just trying to powerhouse his way through these two other men in this match. Perhaps having seen Regicide his match earlier, he will do something similar and try and get that impressive victory. It seems that Chad Jacobs will not let Jason do that with a series of combination punches to his face and Ray back up on his feet, showing off to the delighted crowd. Jason brawling out the other side of the ring, Ray interrupts with an impressive German suplex, managing to just flip Jason McKay over the top, not even having to leave his feet, and a German suplex for Chad Jacobs as well. Ray really making sure to show off his skill set right now. Pressing the advantage as Jason K is out on the concrete. Ray manages to lift Chad up, goes for the elbow, but Chad ducks under and follows with a series of blows. Jason coming back in and repaying every blow from earlier with impressively powerful lariats. Knocking Chad to the outside and following him there as well, before rolling back inside to perhaps looking to take out Ray. And that's exactly what he does with a series of powerful blows to Ray's head. Following up with a swift kick to his gut. Going to the cover, managing to get a one count on Ray Despinana. On Ray Despinana. An impressive bear hug flip, nearly sending Ray out of the ring. But Chad will not be silenced as he keeps fighting back against the larger member of the Annex. The pair brawling in the ring once again. And looks like Jason could have been setting up for something big, but Chad won't let him. Managing to get in a very good looking Twala World Lariat in the corner. A fish drop keeping Jason off his feet as Ray makes it back to the ring. With an exploder suplex going for that quick cover. While Jason is out cold, he manages to pick up the win using that in. Incredible exploder suplex to pin Chad Jacobs. Ray carrying on in this Scepter Quest tournament, getting managing to pick up the win over the giant Jason McKay and the talented Chad Jacobs. It seems like tonight is not the night for tag team members. Of course, our main event here is for the Ring Classic Women's Championship, currently held by Ivy White. Uh, now, Deanna Masters is looking to get the win for Annex tonight and capture that Ring Classic Women's Championship. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the Ring Classic Women's Championship. Accompanied by her stablemate and one half of your tag team champions, Diana Masters is looking here to capture gold for Annex. looking to put on an impressive show and hopefully get the win as Jason McKay failed earlier and so did Alex Kane. 
a real powerful team the Annex are holding the Ring Classic Tag Team Championships, but in singles competition they have yet to really pick up much luck apparently. We'll have to see how well Diana Masters does tonight against your Ring Classic Women's Champion right here. If the music here isn't a clue, Ivy White is a woman on who makes up serious business. A tough champion who isn't here to really make friends, but prove that she is the best, the strongest, and most athletic woman Ring Classic has to offer. And that's really what it means when you get to wear that gold around your waist. Green Classic Women's Championship belt right there. Introducing the challenger from London, England, Diana Masters. The leader of Annex looking to catch a goal tonight. Introducing the champion from Chelsea, England. She is the Green Classic Women's Champion, Ivy. Very proud to have that gold is Ivy White. I'm sure it will take everything Diana Masters has to clutch that gold from Ivy White's hands. Our amazingly talented referee there holding the belt. We will have to see We'll have to see which one of these women can get an early advantage in the opening moments. And it looks like it's Ivy White. Taking control quite quickly with an impressive scoop power slam. And already pressing the attack with a series of powerful blows and a Russian leg sweep. Diana Masters has yet to even get in a single bit of offense. Ivy White really just showing exactly why she's champion and the tactics she's used to get there. Of course, her stablemate trying to distract the champion. And it does seem to have helped as Diana Masters gets her first bit of offense in, lariating Di Ivy White into the corner. But Ivy White's just quick to fight back already. The champion will not falter more less than savory tactics from our champion but it certainly does work as she is the one currently in control a quick integuri counter means diana masters can now press the attack stomping on the arm and stomping just uh, awkwardly just attacking the arm making sure ivy can't really cook in maybe that brain buster Diana with the impressive deadlift suplex there really making sure she can press the advantage not looking to lose it Ivy White quickly trips her back up and is back in control maybe frustrated with how the match was going then going for that quick count but only managing to get the one Champion already back in control and pulling hair. Going to the top rope, she could be setting up for that 450 splash. Instead, it's just a big knee drop to the neck. Just wanting to make sure that she stays it down. Following an elbow drop, it looks like it may have caught Diana Masters in the back of the head. Which could definitely make it a bad blow for the rest of the match. Suplex up from the ground. Ivy White is once again in control. Like her or not, you do have to respect the woman's tenacity and aggression. Another Inzaguri knocking Ivy White down on the ground. The challenger is really looking to at least put up a best fight that she can. 
Climbing to the top rope, she could be setting up for something big, and a leg drop, but Ivy manages to get out of the way. Setting up for something there, but Diana manages to counter and grabs the leg and goes for the single leg Boston Crab. Looking to perhaps make sure that Ivy White's back is not 100%. Going for that quick cover, but only getting the one count. Ivy White does not want to lose her championship to the leader of Annex, and it's clearly on display here, using every tactic and going for every pin where she can. Diana fighting out of whatever Ivy had planned. Let's see if she can use that to her advantage as she Irish whips Ivy into the corner. Oh, looks like she has managed to lock in the whirl a whirl arm break, arm bar. But Ivy White is quick to roll out of it and go back to offense of her own with a pair of swift elbows knocking Diana into the corner. Turning her round and just throwing her into the ring post. Perhaps looking to make sure that Diana cannot use that arm bar again. Diana going for something there, but goes low, and Ivy ducks the lariat. Diana slipping though, it's clear that her she is a bit tired so far, and the brain buster from Ivy. Stablemate looking to distract the ref and stopping it, but only seems to have helped Ivy White there. She pulls the hair, and now the champion is distracted. Perhaps Diana could go for a roll-up, but instead presses the attack with an excellently executed backbreaker. The slamming Ivy down across the knee and now stomping on her back. Stomping on the arm, Diana is looking to make sure that Ivy can't get him any more offense here. We'll have to see how that plays out for her there. An impressive slam as the challenger stays in control. Looking Ivy into the friendly corner, but Ivy fights back from that kick and hits the single leg drop kick. Now this could be the end of the match and Ivy staying the ring classic women's champion, and I called it correctly. Ivy White is once again your ring classic women's champion. I doubt anyone is going to be able to stop this woman's dominance. One of the many quick counts that was part of this match and the very minor bit of offense that Diana Masters managed to get in. While she did fight hard, she clearly didn't fight hard enough. The armbar could have been the end of the match as it has been for many who have faced Diana, but Ivy White able to wriggle out of there as quickly as possible and press the advantage with the axe of her brain buster and single leg drop kick to stay your champion. Well, thank you for joining me for another fantastic episode of Ring Classic as our women's champion celebrates. I've been Charles Hawkeye, and this has been Ring Classic.